Zaxby's, indescribably good. Welcome to a special edition of the Rocky Hidalgo Show, where tonight we talk about two games that we won. We get ready to talk about a third game that I'm going to say we're going to win. And then we've got a week off. So this is the Rocky Hidalgo Show as we review the Woodstock game, the Cherokee game, and we preview the Lasseter game coming up this Friday at Raider Valley. Well, Coach, you called them the Jekyll and Hyde team. And two weeks ago at Cherokee, you pull off a 47-40 to victory at, I think, a very tough place to play. Uh, Woodstock is a very difficult place. That same night, Lasseter survives Cherokee by one point on a missed extra point. The Cherokee comes all the way back from a couple touchdowns deficit and then all of a sudden the kind of shoes are on the other foot you crush Cherokee 38 14 and Woodstock ambushes and beats Lasseter by a point but you came in with two road victories in the region you're two and oh you're three and two mission accomplished yeah you know we're, we're excited to be two and oh uh we weren't real excited about how we played um right. at Woodstock defensively we felt like we did some things offensively we, we felt like we also left some points out there and made some mistakes um <clears throat> but uh you know, there were some opportunities in the game to put the game away, and we did not. Um, but defensively, we made a lot of minimal mistakes defensively. Uh, back in the second year, we, we blew some coverages. Uh, um, you know, our run fits were not very good. It was more reminiscent of how we played versus Hillgrove, mm -hmm. which was disappointing because I think Hillgrove and, and Woodstock are two of the worst defensive performances we've had here in a long time. And sandwiched between that is one of the best against, against North Cobb. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's, you know, and for me, that's, a, that's mental. Uh, those those are mental issues. Those are focus issues. Those are discipline issues. We really went back to practice. And our kids, the good thing about our kids, they want to do well. They don't like giving up 40 points. Um, they don't like giving up 47 points. And they responded, really responded versus uh, versus Cherokee this week and or last week, and and uh, did, you know played really well defensively. Cherokee's got a very good offensive football team, and uh, you know we did a lot of nice things. Cherokee, you really the team kind of starts a little slow. I mean, it's three nothing, ten nothing. Second half, KK Brooks, offensive line, just begin to dominate. You have to be, I guess, pleased or are pleased with the maturation of your offensive line and the way they are able to push people around, North Cobb and Cherokee being great examples of that. You know, in, in, at halftime, we, we went into the game, and Cherokee has a, has a very good coaching staff up there and a similar coaching staff who had been at um, Etowah. And Etowah was always a, a real tough physical defense, very yep. well coached. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we probably did not do a very good job, uh, you know, in preparation for the game, just understanding that, that uh, Cherokee, their, their coaching staff did a great job coaching those guys, but they, they're a little thin and light on the defensive ends. They don't have those 240-pound defensive ends that, that Etowah had a few years ago. And, and I just kind of, at halftime we came together, I looked at Coach Allen and I was like, let's run the football. Let's grind the clock out here. We had a 17 to nothing lead, and let's go play some Walton football and really stick, stick, you know, stick our nose on them and, and drive the ball. And, and uh, we really looked like, for the first time all year, we looked like a Walton team. We really ran the ball. We broke big plays. Um, and on top of that, uh, you know, defensively we ran around and, 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 and we made plays defensively. It was the first time we did it, other than just kind of um, uh, holding our own. Coach, you, you, defensively, you have a tough game against Hillgrove. You come back and play, I think, one of the best games I've seen Walton play in, in years, literally, when you, when you beat that North Cobb team. Go to Woodstock, you get in a track meet, but you win. You come back, you, you go back on the road again, and you hold Cherokee to 14 points after they had a big offensive weekend the weekend before against Lasser. When you're a coach, how do you manage or how do you coach inconsistency? Well, you know, you have to you have to identify what the problem is. That's the one thing. If you you know, at the, it, regardless what the problem is, you can't find the you do, you'll never find the solution if you don't identify the problem. So mm -hmm. that's what we had to do. We had to go back and see what are we doing wrong. We found some fundamental things uh, that we were making mistakes with. On top of that, we feel like you know we've our secondary is very very talented, and we've got two guys uh, returning starters back there. Right. But they were both corners last year. Now they're playing safeties, and we had to kind of go back and sit in there and say, you know, we're really inexperienced and young in the secondary. And so were we mm -hmm. trying to do too many things? Were we were we explain it effectively to them? Because it's it was not a matter of talent or ability. We made mistakes and blew coverages. Um, and I think that's what we had to go back and do. And and are still we, we you know we can't add anything at this point. We're trying to let defensively, let our defensive players get comfortable with what we're doing, and and um, and and we're we're making strides on that. I think we've had two good days of practice this week in preparation for last year. <clears throat> KK Brooks, only sophomore, is really had some strong, I would say, dominating performances. He doesn't kind of knock you over with the long, long runs. It's just he just keeps coming back over and over again, and. We've talked about this before. Sometimes those are the worst guys to play against. Where you just 
six mm -hmm. yards, here I am again. Seven yards, here I am again. And he's he's a master of that. Now he had some long runs mm -hmm. on Friday, but still, and KK just keeps coming back. He's like a like a battering ram. Well, you know, one thing he's a sophomore, and you have to see that he's a very tough kid. He's one of the most coachable kids we've been around. Really intelligent kid. What he's been able to do as a sophomore is really impressive. It is. And I think what you'll see is <clears throat> out of him is as he begins to mature and as he begins to understand those reads and, and where the where, how the defense is going to try to play him, you'll start to see bigger plays out of him. It was exciting to see that Friday night because he did some right. things Friday night that he had not done uh, this year as of yet. Um, so I think he's starting to get those things. And, you know, the great news is we're going to have him for two more years, and you'll see him do some of those things, uh, I think, more frequently. Uh, as he matures and, and understands the offense and all the intricate uh, points that he's got to know when you're running the football. And the other side yeah. of it is, if you do have a guy that's a battering ram and keeps coming at you, and then he pops the 42s and 45s, I mean, it just puts a defense on its heels completely. Yes, it does, and it's it's hard for him. So the Raiders go on the road and get two tough victories at Woodstock and Cherokee. We're going to take a break, hear from our sponsors, Axby's, then we're going to come back and preview that last year game. I've understood some of those games are kind of close and kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Normally, Rocky, I would say that on a Friday night in October when the Lassiter Trojans come to Walton, the place is going to be sold out. This year's a little different. Yeah. This year we have the Cobb County break, which, for all of you Raider fans, we better have our highest rating of Raider vision we've ever had <laughs> if you're on vacation at the beach or the mountains. But it's a little unusual circumstances, Rocky. Break starts on Tuesday, the game, I mean, on Thursday. Um, people are going to be out of town. The players are all here, but I really don't think it's going to matter too much when the Trojans come to town and you guys have that rivalry game on a Friday night. I think you'd play that game in front of nobody if you had to. You know, it's going to be really interesting. and The, the band's not going to be there. I think they're out of town on, on their big band trip. And, mm -hmm. But I think our kids will be prepared to play. The atmosphere, I'm sure, will be affected uh, in some. And, and it's going to cost the school a significant amount of money by having that sure. furlough day and, or those furlough days. and. And, uh, and not having, you know, 5,000 people in the stands. Uh, but regardless of those things, two good football teams, they'll be there, and, uh, and it's going to be important for our players and Lassiter's players. They, they, they won't care how many people. They could, they could play in the desert some place. I was going to say, play in a parking lot at yeah. Walmart, <clears throat> where yeah. you go. They'd be after it. So the Raiders are 3-2. and two. Uh, Lassiter this year, they're 2-3 and three right now, and they're 1-1 one and one in the region. They're scoring big bunches of points. Will Anderson, their quarterback, even in the loss last week against Woodstock, is having a a big, big year, lots of yards, lots of completions. Are we going to see it? Is this a very similar team offensively to what we've seen from last year, last two or three years, or are there some differences that Raider fans should take a look at? Well, you know, I think one of the things um, <clears throat> that really sets their offense apart, I think, uh, offensively, is uh, their offensive line play. I think their offensive line play is very good. They've got, I think they've got all five guys back, if I'm not mistaken. And you can tell by the way they run the football. They are, they're a very good running team, a different type of running game than what we have. Um, but but they're, it's very effective. They, they do a nice job. I think their backs do an, a great job of, of reading the blocking of the, the offensive linemen, and, and they get in there, and they're tough kids, and they do a good job moving the defense around. Um, and outside of that, I think, uh, you know, they're, they're comparable to what they usually are. Their quarterback mm -hmm. is, is a good player, knows the offense, um, and he can make all the throws. They've got, you know, four talented wide receivers. They catch the ball in traffic. They play well within the system. They block for each other. All of those things offensively make them very tough, and I think m when you factor in their ability to run the football and how it's improved this year, you know, it, it's as good an offense as they've had over there, uh, probably with the exception of those Hudson Mason years right. when, you know, they didn't run the ball and he just threw it 50 times and you couldn't do anything about it anyway. <clears throat> you know, everybody, coaches love to talk about, listen, we take them one at a time, every game is important, but can you tell the difference in your team last year week than the other weeks? Uh, you know, you always can. I mean, it's an important game for – for uh, for us, and you know, it's funny. Uh, we were talking with someone the other day about how the rivalries have changed. You know, oh, when absolutely. I first came here in 1996, it was uh, it was the Wheeler Wildcats and Marietta and Roswell and Pope. I mean, those were right. the, you know really Wheeler and Pope uh, were the two big games. Um, and and as times have changed, this last year game has become the biggest game on our schedule year in year out. And that's because the region championship has really come down between us and and them over the last four or five years. 
Yeah, I think back to you know five, six, seven years ago, it was it was Roswell, yep. and uh, you know, they were a, a state champion and nationally ranked. And how, but Lasseter and, and Walton are almost must see high school football, um, definitely in Cobb County. But you know, we had a semifinal game here a couple of years ago that mm-hmm. was truly one for the for the ages. In terms of the the preparation that you're going through right now, Rocky, with your defense against this kind of high powered offense that scores a lot of points, win or lose, they score a lot of points. How do you get your defense grounded to say, guys, we need maybe your best performance. We need a North Cobb-like performance. You know, the one thing we have to do is we have to focus on fundamentals. Um, we don't want to do anything flashy and, and, and really go back to square one and make sure that we understand one. You know, we have a saying that, you know, align, assign, and refine. We want to make sure that we're lined up correctly, that we know our assignments. And once we have those two things, we can refine the game plan, guys moving around blitzing uh, if we want to disguise things. Uh, but we have to have those things down first. Um, and, you know, the, the other side of this is, is offensively is, you know, when you play a really good uh, offense, you want your offense to perform well. We want to keep the football away from them. It's, we need to have a Walt Knight. And our big games against them where we've won, we've, we've held on to the football. We've run the ball uh, effectively. And, and that's made a huge difference in, uh, in our ability to go out there and, and slow their offense down. And then you've got an off week, <clears throat> which is – I, you know, kind of unusual, but a good thing to have a, a week like that in the middle of the season sometimes before you come back and play Wheeler. But uh, this weekend at uh, here at Raider Valley, Lasseter Trojans, if you are out of town, you can watch us live on the Internet on Raider Vision. Now, Rocky, Saturday you uh, made a little trip to Athens, and one of the things that kind of sparked that was you were talking about, you know, defensive being lined up right. You know, in the game, and you were at the game, but when watching the game on TV, it was amazing how many times the announcer talked about, you know, Georgia or LSU, they're confused on defense. They're out of alignment. Mm-hmm. The, the number of formations that teams throw at defenses now, I mean, how do you manage that, particularly with kids? Well, I, you know, one of the things that we try to do defensively is come up with hard set rules. You know, one of the right. things is we want to leverage the leverage the, the, the offense. We want to make sure that we have a guy outside there in man on the line of scrimmage. And we saw some of that LSU get outside of Georgia a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, you know, we want to make sure we don't have three runners to run down the field. We saw the same thing LSU, the flip side of that, is LSU blew three coverages, one for the game winner, one for right. um, both times. They were trying to get a safety over the, the, uh, the deep outside half. And, and the corner thought they were going to get deep, deep help. And it, those are things that you can see in the stadium, probably tougher to see when you watch it at home. Uh, but the corners that were in a trail technique thought they were going to get deep help, and the safety never got off the hash, mm-hmm. and they were blown coverages. Um, <clears throat> so when I watch the games, and, and you know, it's funny as, as, as a coach, you know, we, I see the same mistakes in, in NFL games and college games yeah. that our kids make. I right. watched, uh, you know, the Saints and, and, uh, and the Dolphins last night. I watched the Dolphins playing man-to-man. <laughs> and and the guys in good great coverage on on Jimmy Graham he turns and looks back for the football and Graham gets separation Drew Brees drills it in there, and it's a touchdown. We we teach our kids all the time. We preach to them. Don't look for the football unless you're in contact. And here's a guy getting paid millions of dollars makes the same mistake. He's yeah. he picks the ball's going to come and and so <clears throat> you know those those it's, I guess as you know as I've heard coaches say you're never over the hump. You always have to go back and reteach those fundamentals because. If you don't, you get what you inspect, not what you expect. And as soon as you stop coaching those fundamentals, your players won't go out and exhibit it and play, and play that way. And, and it's on every level, and, and it's still early in the season, especially for teams like Georgia and LSU, which have young defenses. Yeah. When you have young defenses, it's hard to get them. It's hard to find consistency. They have, they're, many times they're not mature enough to be focused. And if they're not focused, if not disciplined, uh, you know they can't. They don't. They don't accept the coaching and, and assimilate all the ideas and techniques and fundamentals that they need to uh, during practice. I'm not going to presume to put you in Coach Rick's shoes, but it, a question I have is: They have survived with with the loss, but have generally survived a September that very few teams face. Is Coach Rick's biggest challenge right now to tell those guys we still have almost the entire season to play? <clears throat> I think one of the things I, I heard this. Um, you know, I think great teams focus on the process, and they don't focus on you know trophies and championships. I right. think they, they're 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 in the here and now. Our great teams, and it's something we're trying to struggle with ourselves. Our great teams that we've had are always focused on now. The, the what's important now with today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right. the grind. Um, you know, and and that's what you have to sell your kids. I think that's one of the things that Nick Saban has done such a great job with at Alabama. He done he's done a great job, you know, coaching defense, recruiting players. But I think one of the things he does with all the success is keep kids focused 
right. on today, on the Monday at practice. And that's very hard in that environment. You know, uh, in regards to Georgia, I think that's what they've got to sit around and look for. They've, they've beaten these three big teams, and they're playing for a shot at the SEC championship, the national championship. And the only way they're going to get there is to be great on Tuesday when they're preparing for Vanderbilt, on Tuesday right. when they're preparing for Tennessee. Um, and if you're not making strides, somebody's catching up with you the whole time. Yep. <clears throat> well, folks, we've got a big one here at Raider Valley this Friday night against Lassiter. If you are in town, we'd love to see you. And if you're not, we'd love to have you on Raider Vision. But this has been the Rocky Hidalgo Show. Lassiter preview. After two victories on the road, we're home for the big one. Hey, we'll see you Friday night. It's been brought to you by Zaxby's. I'm Kurt Schreiner along with the head coach, Rocky Hidalgo. We'll see you in a couple weeks.